Hello, everyone. It's Charlton. Please subscribe to my channel and tap the notification bell. I would appreciate it majorly. So, day three of the Amber Greiger murder trial and the shooting of Botham Jean, her neighbor, shooting, um, you know, the African American man by the ex Dallas cop, um, you know, in his own apartment. She mistook his apartment for her own apartment. We uh, we obviously don't need to review that every single time. So the most um, the most revealing thing today was um, this individual here, who's a Texas Ranger, and he's the lead investigator in the case. His name is uh, David Armstrong, and he was on the stand today on, f on behalf of uh, the prosecution. So, um, but. He basically, you know, I'll play his testimony, uh, or at least a uh, portion of it. I, and it's not clear to me why um, the jury wasn't in the uh, in the courtroom when he w when he gave this particular testimony. Um, but he basically didn't believe that she, um, you know, she she committed a crime that she had um, hadn't done anything like criminally negligent or reckless in that. Um, her actions were reasonable, given the um, the mistake of just you know and of mistaking Botham Jean's apartment for her, for for her own. And uh, you know this is an extremely unusual situation where you have the lead investigator basically disagrees with the prosecution. Um, I mean, because in his view, um, if it was you know if he was the prosecutor, he wouldn't be bringing any charges against her. And, uh, I mean, this is kind of what I've been saying, you know. So, um, I mean, he said, I don't believe that the shooting was reckless or criminally negligent based on the totality of the investigation and, and the circumstances uh, and facts. Armstrong said the jury wasn't present when he said he believed she acted reasonably after perceiving John um, as a threat. The judge later ruled that the jury couldn't hear I couldn't hear the Texas Rangers opinion of the reasonableness of Geiger's actions. You know, in this particular in this particular um, testimony, because he's there as a witness, um, you know, uh, uh, a witness for the prosecution. So I and mean, I listened to this this um, you know this testimony from the Dallas Morning News, and I listened to the judge's rationale. And the defense, uh, the defense attorneys for Amber Geiger, who were, you know, I guess arguing to have his that testimony included or to be heard by the jury, you know, and then and then she said because he's being 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 you know called as a witness, not as an expert witness, so and and then the defense attorney basically said that he is he's listed as a de as an expert witness, you know, for them. Um, so basically when, when the case gets turned over to them and they, it, you know, I think the prosecution always goes first then the defense goes second when the defense has their turn, um, to, 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 you know, to try the case, to give their version of events, he's probably going to get called as an expert witness and, and will, that will be allowed to be heard, I assume by the jury, you know? Um, and it was more than what I just read to you, but the long and short of it was, was what I opened up with was that this guy, the lead investigator in the case, the guy who invested the, investigated, you know, led the investigation into this murder trial, basically doesn't believe she should be prosecuted, you know, this prosecution should be going forward, that she didn't really commit a crime, that she acted reasonably, and that she wasn't reckless, uh, I don't believe that she, uh, the, the shooting was reckless or criminally negligent. I'm going to play that in a second. Just trying to get all my thoughts out before I do. Um, and he clearly states that. You'll hear it. So, but the prosecution continues down this path, okay, that, um, that, uh, you know, and he, he even he even believes that you know it was a reasonable mistake because there's no clear, there's nothing clearly saying you know which floor you're on, you know where you know the, the every door looks exactly the same, the apartments look the same, and the door the door is a part of this as well. I'm going to get into that too quickly, um, 
But the prosecution continues to say that she should have known that she wasn't um, in her she wasn't in her own apartment that that it wasn't her apartment, you know. And 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 they emphasize the red carpet again. Okay, actually, a user, um, a, a subscriber, was mentioning today that she she had heard she think the mother the b mother brought this for Botham Jean just so he would know that that was his apartment, you know, and. I'm not sure if the subscriber was su suggesting that, you know, she should have seen it. But I actually, I mean, there's two, we all have, like, it's just all perception, you know. But but I my perception is that that's, that's uh, that indicates, you know, that it's an issue. That the fact that every apartment looks exactly the same, that's the reason why um, Botham Jean's mother probably bought the carpet for him. So he could pick out his own apartment every night when he went home. But he would be looking for it. You know, because he would say to himself, okay, mine's the one with the red carpet. But if you're not looking for it, or if you're not even looking down, but that just proves that you need a red carpet to, in order for, for your own apartment to stand out to yourself if, if it's your apartment. So, um, but my, 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 my basic thing again is that if the prosecution is saying she should have known that it was her apartment, then that means they're saying she, you know, they're suggesting she knew that she didn't just make a simple mistake. I mean, if they're saying she, she should have realized it wasn't her apartment, then, then they're saying, she, like I said, that there, that it wasn't a mistake, that she actually did go there to kill him. I mean, but, but then why? What's the, I think somebody else mentioned in the, in the comments, you know, um, they said there's no motive, and I agree completely. Because if you're saying that she should have known that it was her apartment, she should have realized it. Then you're saying that she went to, uh, she knew it wasn't her apartment, and so then why did she kill him? What what's the reason? And they're not stating that. It's just it's just preposterous. And I am so sorry. Obviously, I mean, who wouldn't be um, for the for the family and and the and the family? I think the father. There was a moment where. Um, you know, uh, some of the body cam footage was played again today, and the judge didn't give a warning to the to the family. And the father saw his own son, you know, and he had he had to turn his face away, you know, in, in horror and, pro and probably crying. Um, but it still doesn't. It, um, it just doesn't change what I've been sa what I'm saying so far. So that's uh, that's that as well there's there was another issue with the door the strike plate which I'll I'll quickly go over that basically in addition to what I said yesterday you know from the testimony from one of the neighbors that you have to lock it from the inside in order to lock it otherwise you know anyone can just open the door with or without you know without a key you know um, but his was even his was even in addition to that so if you don't lock the door from the inside, if you don't, after going into the apartment, turn around and either engage the deadbolt or stick the key in from the inside, I'm fairly certain, you know, to lock it that way without the deadbolt, it remains unlocked. And so that the next person who comes to the door can basically just turn the handle and open the door and walk in. They may use a key, you know, first, thinking they're unlocking the door that's already unlocked, but they're going to turn the handle and... And, and open the door, but the, the the point is the door is unlocked unless it's unless it's locked by the person who opens it, unless they lock it behind them after they go in. Sorry, um, but this one was even malfunctioned even beyond that, so that it basically was ajar, like she said, and that's what this Texas Ranger testified to. He 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 examined the door, you know. He obviously you know opened and closed it, tried it several times. And that's discussed in this Daily Mail piece, which is taking it from somewhere else, I believe. Okay, let me play his testimony very quickly so you hear it straight from him. And, um, you know what? Yeah, let me just do that. Based on the totality of the circumstances, based on the complete investigation, no, sir. Do you have an opinion as to whether it was reasonable for Amber Geiger to believe that she was in her apartment when she encountered the complaining witness? Yes, I do. And what is that opinion? That she believed that there was a 
burglar in her apartment. And that it was reasonable? Yes. And do you have an opinion as to whether it was reasonable for Amber Geiger to perceive, based on the facts and circumstances, that uh, from her standpoint, that uh, the complaining witness was an intruder in her apartment? Yes, sir. And what is your opinion? That it was a reasonable uh, perception. And do you have an opinion as to whether it was reasonable, based on the facts and circumstances, from uh, an ordinary, prudent person? Geiger's position uh, for her to perceive that Botham Jean was a deadly threat. Yes, sir. And what is that opinion? Uh, I believe that she did perceive it, him as a deadly threat. And you believe that was reasonable based on your training and your experience and your consideration of the totality of the circumstances? Yes, sir. As an investigator, that's what you have to do. You have to look at the entire full picture of evidence uh, when you're making a decision not only whether to arrest someone or whether to send them to prison, correct? That's correct. Um, and today you're telling us that based on everything and based on your training and experience, you don't believe there's even probable cause that Amber Geiger committed any crime, correct? That's correct. I will not... Okay, so that's it, dude. And uh, you know, that's that's the that's the lead investigator um, of the case, and he differs completely, one hundred op degrees, one hundred eighty degrees opposite of the the prosecution. About the door, you know, he um, he's it's not in that testimony there, but he explains that. Um, I'm not going to go over whatever everything I just went over about the fact that you have to lock from the inside. He didn't. I don't know if he was asked about that. That was yesterday, you know, from the neighbor. But the strike plate was faulty. It was basically screwed in too much, or the screws were screwed in too, too, too much, basically, um, so that it was pushed in slightly, you know, into the, into the door jam, so that this latch, you know, didn't catch every time. So, um, you know, the door could be ajar, you know, in addition to being unlocked. And so that the next person um, who goes to push their, put their key in, to, you know, and it, whether it turns red or green or whatever, um, it would just open from the force of you pushing the key in, which is what what happened to, to Amber Geiger. So, and that's key because, you know, I was saying yesterday that even though she's a police officer, you know, um, and they're like, and the prosecutors are basically expecting her to act as she would when she was in a police situation, that she should have her weapon, you know, pointed downward and not set the fire you know, and like as if she was, you know, about to go under, undergo an arrest, you know, in a prepared way. But that's not what happened. She's just a person who's going home and got surprised by somebody who, I know it's not her home. I understand that, but she thought it was. She, she was, she, she got scared. She got surprised. It wasn't like she was ready for it. And that's, that's part of it. The door pushed open. It's not like, it's not even like the door was a, a jar and she saw it a jar, you know, that she, so she could have put down her bags, thought somebody's inside, get ready, you know, draw your weapon and have a, a ready frame of mind. That's not what happened. According to her, what happened is, you know, she pushed the key and it opened. And when it opened, her brain is starting to think what's going on, and then she sees somebody, and then she, she just got she got surprised. It was she wasn't ready for it. Um, the jury did hear uh, this part of his testimony about the door, and it says in the jury's presence, Armstrong, the lead investigator, who was leading the investigation, testified that the victim's front door had a flaw that would sometimes result in it not closing properly. At the time of her arrest, Geiger said she found the door of the apartment she thought was hers slightly ajar. She claimed the door opened when she used, uh, used her electronic key to enter the apartment, and she believed she was being robbed when she saw Jean. So, you know, that's a little confusing, a little sort of a contradiction. She didn't find it slightly ajar, as I understand it. She realized, you know, it just basically pushed open when she put her key in it. I mean, if she saw it was slightly ajar, she would have never put her key in it. I think she realized it was slightly ajar. 
when she put her key in it and it just opened. And then she started processing in her brain. During his testimony on Wednesday, Armstrong said it appeared the screws in the strike plate of Jean's door had been screwed in too far, which caused it to bow out. This flaw prevented the door from closing properly as it was designed to do. Armstrong told the court he said it meant that the door would sometimes latch, but other times it wouldn't secure and close properly. Defense attorney said Gene's door was open the day Geiger entered his apartment and shot him dead. Okay, so that's that's that. And I I, I didn't I want to mention the jury makeup. The jury is made up of mostly uh, minorities. You know, there's only two white people. So there's five African Americans, five uh, five Hispanic and Asian, and two uh, two white. Two white, white uh, jurors. Five black jurors, five Hispanic Asian, two white. The other thing is, lastly, before I kind of close this up, is, um, you know, her conduct after, after she shot him. And I agree that I think a lot of people, um, you know, feel that she, she acted poorly, that she was just thinking of her own self-interest and she wasn't doing enough to help him, Okay. And I agree that some of that some of that behavior is definitely questionable. But, but um, you know, I think there's a sev- several things. Is you know, um, uh, none of it. And, and that actually, the one of the first the first responding officers who was a witness, a key witness, it seemed, with the body cam, he was asked about that. You know, and he explained that that both him both him Gene had a slight pulse. You know, he wasn't he wasn't totally he wasn't dead yet when they when they had first gotten there and um i don't know when he did die exactly but and that she's you know she uh, we don't know exactly we haven't heard from her you know in terms of how what she tried to do in between him actually getting shot her, her placing the call i mean there you hear differing accounts from the neighbors we'll hear from her you know what she says but she texted her boyfriend or her lover slash partner, you know, saying, I, I, I effed up, I need you, while she was on the phone with with uh, the 911 operator, you know, and, 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 and in the 911 call, you hear her saying, you know, stay with me, bud, or, or you know, like, I think she even says, I'm so sorry, you know, and, um, you know, and then repeatedly says, I thought it was my apartment, I thought it was my apartment, so, but in terms of, you know, her not... Um, her, her doing things that seem like, you know, she's just worried about herself. That bothers a lot of people, and I understand. That's, but um, I didn't need getting to my point. Is uh, none, of the, none of us, you know, just shot somebody, you know. So it's very easy for us to say that, you know, say that we would have we we just done nothing but help the individual. And, and, and it's not as though I don't know that she was necessarily... Um, like just being a selfish human being, I think she just is just processing things in in a matter of seconds, you know, partial seconds, trying to you know understand, grapple with this completely crazy situation where she just she entered somebody's the wrong apartment and then it ends up shooting somebody. Something that happens once once in a a million lifetimes, you know, 10 million lifetimes. It's an unbelievably unique situation and it's all just crashing on her in a matter of seconds. And so it's, it's just, uh, I don't know, you know, I mean, even, even the officer, the first responding officer, but you know, who comes in and immediately, you know, they're, they're doing CPR on him and stuff like that. Um, you know, even that person, that person's had time. First off, that's the, he didn't shoot anybody. He's not the one who shot somebody. And he's had time to, to, to process it before he even gets there. You know, it's, it's just different, in my opinion. And so you're know, just not thinking rationally completely. And we don't even know exactly. We haven't heard from her. That was a terrible description. But I'm not redoing it. And that's the story there. Thanks for watching my videos. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me a like down below. I'll see you in the next video. Later, man.